Hey y'all, it's Christy Cook from T Doddles. Um, today I'm going to for today is Tutorial Tuesday, and I thought it'd be fun to show you the process of my uh, project that I'm making for for Wednesday's post. Um, sometimes I, I know ahead of time what I'm doing, and sometimes I do things at the last minute. Probably more likely I do things at the last minute. So. Um, so for this po for this uh, project today, I'm using this uh, sewing machine drawer that I got from one of my thrifting adventures, and this old record rack. Um, this idea actually came to me when I was um, putting them away for storage, and I realized that this fit just inside here, and then an idea came to my mind. I uh, I usually, sometimes that's how ideas happen. Sometimes when I buy things, I know exactly what I'm going to do with it. And sometimes I'm just thinking about other things and it's like, oh, that's what I can use that for. So, what I'm using this for is I, most of the time on my table, my little work table here, I keep a pile of patterns um, that I want to do next. Uh, clothing patterns, quilt patterns, bag patterns, all that kind of stuff. And they just kind of lay in a pile and I have to move them around every time. But I thought... If I put this with this, and I don't know if you can see that in this kind of fashion, yeah, then I can have a little rack to set those in. And then in the drawer down here, I could keep any notions and things I needed um, for the pattern I'm making, and like zippers or buttons. And I could also keep any thread I wanted to use so that I don't use it in another project. Um, I could also keep my uh, dressmakers chalk in here. Uh, things that I would need for the patterns. So, the first thing I'm going to do is clean this up a little bit. Because these are pretty old and dingy because they're, you know, thrift store items. So, I'm going to use this Method All-Purpose Cleaner. You can use whatever kind of cleaner you want. This is a, you can use a wire brush. Well, I didn't get a wire brush because this is wire. A wire brush would be good for this, but not for this wood because it can scratch it really bad. But this is a grout brush, which is really stiff. Um, help get away some grime and dirt. And then just the uh, terry cloth lint. Um, what you call this? It's a general purpose cleaning cloth. It's just like a terry cloth that catches lint and dust really well. So that's what I'm going to use to clean it. So, um, I want to take off this knob first because I'm going to be painting, uh, I'm going to be spray painting this and the knob with this Rust-Oleum, uh, this is one of my favorite spray paints, two, two times coverage paint and primer. This is oil rubbed bronze. I've used it on several projects. And then I'm not going to fully paint this because I do like the wood on it. I'm going to use... One of my new favorite paints, this Deco Art Extra Sheen. I used it on my uh, ornaments in one of my posts. Uh, it's bronze, um, and it gives a really nice shine to stuff. I'm gonna use it for some accents. So, like I said, this this is pretty easy. It does have a screw in the back of it if you want to use a screwdriver to take it off, but it comes off uh, pretty easily, just like that. I'm gonna take the washer and the screw out of the back and set it to the side. So I don't lose it and wonder where it went. But all I'm going to do, and I know this is wood, but it's old wood. And this is not like, uh, well, I can't tell. I don't think this is a laminate necessarily, but it almost looks like it is. This is pretty old and dingy, so it really needs a good, a good cleaning. I probably won't use the brush on this unless I find some spots that are really stubborn. Um, this just gets all that dust and dirt off and grime. And any oil residue, oily residue from fingerprints that might be on it. Um, you can see right here, there's some kind of, looks like something dripped down the side of it. I'm just scrub that. Ooh, I bet that sounds a little bit. Scrub it. Scrub it. Uh, so yeah, this work table I'm working at is actually an old drafting table. I got it from my mom a long time ago. Uh, 
I used to be a drafter in architectural and structural drafting. Now I teach drafting. Um, but my mom is also a drafter. Well, she's an electrical designer. And she um, used to have this drafting table, and I took it. And I painted it blue a long time ago. It really needs to be redone and stuff. But it's really useful for cutting fabric and doing projects. Um, so this is my all-purpose table that sits in the middle of my room. Uh, so let's see. Some of this little, whatever this is on the side, didn't come off really good. And you can sand some things like that, but since I'm going to be adding some paint and stuff to this, I'm not going to worry too much about it. And I may wind up, y'all, just accenting this whole thing with that copper paint because it's... Uh, It's not the prettiest of wood on the outside. It's kind of got this red undertone to it a little bit. Um, I do like some woods. I'm not opposed to wood. I don't like to paint everything white like some people do. Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't think I have any white chalk paint. Paint. I don't think I have any white chalk paint. I think all my white, all my chalk paint is in some kind of color. Uh, I just prefer color. You can see all the gook coming off of there. Uh, and you may want to wear gloves when you do something like this. Depending on what I'm working on, sometimes I do. Uh, sometimes it's gunky and nasty. I think this is just not going to come off too well for the most part. You can see there's a little splinter on the front. I may have just done that myself. I don't know. All right. just needs a quick wipe over. I thought it might have some stuff I needed to scrub with that little thing, but uh, it does have a little bit of <laughs> rusty kind of stuff on it. I had to get this where y'all could see the surface, and I didn't think I did a good job with putting my camera up on my phone as it be. But I'm just going to scrub in there help take off some of that stuff. Um, I'm just trying to get off the surface grime. I'll get a better paint finish. Alright. So, now, there's some little white paint up under there. Now that I have everything clean and shiny, well, not necessarily shiny, uh, See my towel. It's fairly dirty from all of this. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna take this outside and the knob outside. Oh, I forgot to clean the knob. That's probably the dirtiest part of that drawer, isn't it? That's the part that everybody touches is the knob. And they pull the drawer in and out. So yeah. And it's not bad looking knob. It is a metal knob. And the patina is okay. Sometimes I like it like that, but I want it to match this. So I'm going to take this out there and spray paint it, and then I'll be right back. Okay, while my uh, paint is drying, I'm going to go ahead and paint what I want to paint on this. I did want to talk a little bit about what I'm going to use because that, that uh, record holder sits down in here. Uh, but I want it to set up like above this so my plan is to put these inside these little cup hooks here in the side like 
so so that I can set that down on top of them and it hold it up. So that's the plan. We shall see if it changes. Um, so now I did some little test patches inside with my paint. If you can see that. Oh, there it goes. You can see the shiny little patch back here. Um, and I do that with a smaller brush just to see. Is it going to coat? Do I need to think of something else? So I'm going to paint this all on the inside of this. So, and I, what I really need to do, get my bigger brush out. I'm going to just squeeze some of this right on down in there, just like that. And paint away because, ooh, look at that. Look at that shine. Y'all cannot see that over there. Ooh, there it goes. Ooh, look how shiny that is. Very shiny. So, I find when you got little tubes like that, it's easier to just squeeze it on down in there. And this, y'all, a little of this goes a long, long way. It does not take much of this at all. Let's see. Oh, up the side, up the side, up the side. So shiny, shiny, and that is just paint, this paint is awesome y'all, had it, had it sitting around for a long time before I did my ornaments, and when I tried it and it was so, so shiny, I was like, I gotta use that on something else, you know, because it is really gives lots of bling, it's gonna look like I got a little Copper patina down it. Well, brass. This is supposed to be brass. Although it doesn't look very brassy to me. Woo! Um, now, this does leave marks with your brush. But if you just go in one direction like that, it'll get out mostly. Um, I'm not looking for perfect paint lines and something like this anyway. Because it's it's a thrifted item and I kind of like the to see in the, the wood is a little rough texture down at the bottom anyway so to invest in some big tubes of this. I don't know. I don't remember how much these were. These little ones probably weren't too much because they're uh oh as a matter of fact I think they were a little bit cheaper because I was in Home Depot when I bought these and they had big tubes of it and I was like I didn't want to spend that on the big tubes until I found out if I liked the little tubes. You know what I mean? So. And that paint I'm using on the, the knob and everything has little flecks in it like bronze because it's a uh, aged bronze color. So it will fit perfectly with this. Although I had thought I would go over the outside of it with with that. I don't think I'm going to do that now. I'm going to go across the top. Just carry that over because it's already got on there anyway. Pretend like I meant to do that. Sometimes you just got to go with the flow when you're making stuff. Um, so I think I will be doing some kind of distress paint look on the outside. I'm just not in love with this wood on here. Y'all, it's just not a pretty wood. It's like, 
that's hard to see in there. It's like, I just don't like that wood color or that wood tone for that matter. Um, I gotta do this other side over here. Look at me sticking my finger in the paint. I'm good at that. I do stuff like that all the time. That's why I have to wear my, my work clothes. Paint. Okay if it gets paint on it clothes because I'm going to get paint on it for sure. Here we go. Let's see. into the bottle or the tub or whatever you got going on all right so this is so shiny shiny so so shiny I'm a messy painter. That is all. Got a lot of excess in there. Lots of excess. Get all that out. We don't need that much in there. Okay. have pictures on the blog to go along with this so y'all can see everything better I'll do my post tomorrow I'll have all the links in it and everything you need if you want to get some of this fabulous paint because I really love it so shiny like I said it didn't take that much look at there Looks like it was dipped in, well, bronze, I guess, because it's bronze. I'm trying to get that light to hit it just right. Oh, yeah. That is some shiny, shiny paint. Look at that shine. I love that. That little contrast of that bling with the aged wood, even though I w I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and distress that outside with some kind of rubbed on paint just to cover up some of that some of that wood not all of it so but I've got to wash out some paint brushes and wash my hands so I'll be back okay I'm back all my paint is dry on my wire frame and my knob if you can see that little shimmery to it um, I changed the angle of my camera a little bit so hopefully you can see the stuff on the table better um, I have decided that I really just do not like the wood on this and I did a little test on the corner of uh, this chalk paint it's one of my favorite chalk paints to use. It's Americana Decor. It's from Deco Art, which is the same thing that these paints are from. Um, this is called Vintage. Um, so it's like a, a very soft greeny blue color. And I have decided that I'm going to paint the entire outside of this and then rough up, uh, rough it up a little bit to show a little bit of wood through it. Uh, I think I like that better. This is a little tacky in here still, but the top surface is okay. So I have also decided instead of using the S hook or the cup hooks like I was going to use, 
just gonna use these these little antique looking screws um, the the cup hooks stuck out too far They're really not necessary so since I want this I want the little knobby feet to go down in there and it has a little bit of tension on it so it kind of sits there by itself but it's not gonna stay if you keep moving around so I'm gonna put just a screw I don't know how to show this where y'all can see it. I'll turn it on its side. Yeah. So I'm going to put a screw right, right behind this leg, and right behind this leg, and all four legs. So then this can push down and set on top of it. Um, then it will have a place to sit, but I can still remove it if I wanted to. I didn't want to attach it to the, to it. Um, I'm going to get a marker mark with. I didn't want to attach it to it because if something falls down in there, I can reach my hand down in there, but it still it still would be removable if I wanted to. to. So, I'm just going to mark a little spot right there so I can see where that goes. Um, and really, I can just mark it with this screw because I can put a little notch with my screw, I'm gonna mark this pin on my hand, or there we go. All right, so and you can just see. Maybe you can see there's little marks. It's hard to see now because it's so shiny. But I'm gonna take my drill. I've got a very, the smallest little, um, wood bit on there to drill with. Um, don't you want to make sure we pull the trigger? Righty tighty, lefty loosey. That's the way that goes. And so, since I've got these pretty close to the edge, this is going to be, it's going to put the screws at a slight angle because the holes going to go at a slight angle because I can't get straight down like this in here. Um, but that's okay because then the screw will tilt up some and it'll still be attached in the side so it will still hold and I'm just gonna put a little start a hole right where those marks are and y'all you probably should measure these down from the top if you want it to set perfectly even but I have probably a bad habit of uh, eyeballing stuff. But, you know, if it was something that had to be sturdy for, um, like I was hanging on the wall or something like that, I would definitely mark it better. Uh, for something like this, it's usually pretty easy to adjust if I need to. So, I'm not seeing the mark. I'm just, oh, I'm not far enough back. There we go. Alright, one more. Let me screw that Alright, so that was a bad idea. Right in my face. You can see the little holes for my screws. So now I'm gonna screw those in there. I'm gonna get this little. This is why I like having this wall back here. It's got most of my tools on it, so I can use them. I do have a toolbox in case I need to tote things around, but this is perfect. This is a little Phillips head screwdriver. I'm just gonna screw that in. You see? These were some, I don't know what size they are or where I got them from because they were in my little bin of screws that um, I keep when I take apart something. I think they may have come off of my old jewelry box I took apart and did different things with. I don't know. I just found four that were just the right length and size. 
so I grabbed them. And that's why I like to save the screws or anything like that from anything I take apart. So you never know what you might be able to do with it later on. Do, do, do. So screw those in. And I'm just hand tightening them. The walls of this, they're pretty hefty. But I wouldn't have wanted to use something with a super long uh, <clears throat> shaft on it because that would come right through the side. So you want to make sure whatever you're using is going to be supportive but not burst through the side of your object. So you don't want that happening. So now let's test this out. I'll set that down in there. Look at there. Should come up a little bit. Oh no! This one's not in the right place. Can't imagine why that happened. Okay, so what's happening is that foot is just sticking out a little further. But guess what? I can push that over it. It's just a hair off. Anything? There we go. Now that still works. Everything. This screw. How did that screw get so far down the side? All right. So <laughs> that screw in the back did not get in the right place at all. But it still works. <laughs> you can see that sitting down in there. It's not going to come out really easy. And it's not going to pull out this way. So it's secure. And it's fairly level. Uh, you can see the side is a little unlevel. But it's level enough for what I want to do with it. So now that's on there. Let's check out how this knob looks. Look at that. That's pretty. All right, so now, now I have to take this out, paint the outside, and then I'm almost done. If I can get it back out. I might even get this back out. You know what? I'm going to leave it in there. Okay? I'm going to leave it in there. <laughs> so this is the process. You get to see the real life process of what I go through when I actually make a project. Because I don't always... Uh, know how things are going to work when I do it and sometimes it's a, it's a tr little trial. So what I'm doing with this, I'm just taking a little bit of this chalk paint. This stuff covers really well y'all. Since I want a distressed look, I'm not going to get a super amount on my, my uh, brush. I love this kind of brush for this though because uh, it does give you such great coverage. And I'm going to just, I'll be buffing this off once it dries to get those corners and show some wood and wear like it was painted and then it wore out, right? Everybody loves that distressed look, which is so funny to me sometimes because we do things to make it look distressed. Even though it was looking distressed before, it just <laughs> wasn't the right kind of distress, right? <laughs> so that cracks me up sometimes when we do things like that well when i do things like that and i see others do things like that but it just makes things more interesting you know it really does this thing will come in handy for handle there sometimes it's good when things don't come back apart oops yeah it just happened and i did get paint in my little knob hole but really uh, it's it's okay because I can just I will take probably the end of that screwdriver <laughs> and a piece of paper towel and wipe it off when I get done painting this okay so I'm gonna well can I turn this get paint on the bottom I don't want it to stick to my paper towel so I'll try not to get too much paint on the bottom because it will stick to that paper towel because I've had that happen before so let's see whoop, 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 whoop. and see I like this I don't like stark white stuff too much uh, aged white sometimes looks okay to me but 
I like to have some kind of color in it. This is color, but it's not like so bright that it's gonna be something that I can't fit in with whatever decor I change it to or whatever I do in the future with it because sometimes things work for a while for what I made them for and then sometimes I change them into something else and that is the beauty of repurposing to me I have got some of this on this top but I'll show you what I do to get back that patina on the top I'm gonna probably bring it down the sides a little bit with the onto the blue once it's dry because I think that would look really neat so here we go rub 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 this brush is great for getting into those little cracks and stuff getting good coverage so, and it does have some streaks in it, which is fine, because that's what I wanted. Um, and I will buff, I will go over it with some fine grit sandpaper and buff out, buff around the edges and corners a little bit more. So, let's see. There we go. Uh, I like that much better than, look at that. Yeah, I like that much better than the brown that was on the outside of that sewing machine box or sewing machine machine drawer I want to call it a box all the time and I've noticed when I look down in there I've caught that paint on the inside I have to touch that up this happens to me a lot too because I don't like to wait for stuff to dry it drives me crazy but that's okay I can touch up all of that so now I will have to let this dry really well before I finish this up, so um, I'll just talk a little bit. I'm just going to put the knob back on, right? And uh, touch up my paint on the tops and when we get come down the side some. But uh, I think I'm going to end this video here because tomorrow, uh, Wednesday's blog post will have the finished, complete finished project. Excuse me. And better pictures for you to see. So, um, I hope y'all enjoyed this little tutorial of my DIY process when I make over projects. Um, if you like the video, you can give it a thumbs up. Think about subscribing. Uh, you can see more stuff like this and about my sewing and crochet because I like to make everything, y'all. So, <laughs> I will see y'all next time.